Okay, this is 7.1 to 7.4, scale diagrams and similar polygons. Um, we'll go over these notes pretty quick. There's not a lot, not a lot of difficult stuff here. So what we're talking about is enlargement and reductions. And you already know enlargement and reductions. You've seen this anytime if you ever did any photocopying, right, or stuff like that. So an enlargement is when you actually take this, the actual, so the one on the left here, and move to a new scale picture. So in this case, it's going from smaller to larger, so it's an enlargement. Uh, this one here, the actual, and then we move to a scale diagram. So we're getting smaller, so it's a reduction. So then you can see this one here, small to large, enlargement, uh, large to small, reduction, right? Then the bottom one here, the arrow, small to large, enlargement, uh, large to small, reduction. Okay, so now, so these are all just enlargement reductions. And what we do is we actually assign a value to it. And the value is going to be what's known as scale factor. So you flip the page, you can look at scale factor. Scale factor is just a number. It's a ratio, it's a fraction, it's a decimal, it's whatever you want it to be. And all it is, is the scale over the actual. So in, in, the easiest way to remember is the second measurement over the first measurement. So let's take a look at this first one. We can see the actual and it's going to a scale. So it's going from smaller to larger, so it's an enlargement. Uh, so what we do is we take the second measurement, which is 15 centimeters and divide it by five centimeters. So 15 divided by five gives us three. So what we could say is, this scale diagram is three times the size of the actual, and that would be an enlargement. Okay, so it works for the other one too. Here's our actual, here's our scale. You can see it's getting smaller, but it's still the second measurement, which is four, divided by the first measurement, which is 16. So four divided by 16 is a quarter, or if you want to change it to a decimal, 0 0.25, it's a reduction. Now, if what you notice is enlargements will have a number greater than one. One, 1 1.5, two, uh, 300, whatever it happens to be. Reductions have a number between zero and one. So it's a fraction or a decimal. So it's like 0 0.25. Now you could also say if you wanted to, even though this is a reduction, you could say this from the actual to the scale is four times as small, or it's a quarter of the size. It's just about the terminology. Okay, so on the third page, what we can do here is we can look at scale factor to calculate new things. So what we have is we have our original right here, one, two centimeters, one centimeter, three centimeters, and we want to create a new one. And it tells us the scale diagram, the scale factor is 1.5. So every measurement is 1.5 times as big. And just like we said, times is big. So when you deal with scale factor, you multiply. So this one centimeter up the top here, here it is, one centimeter times 1.5, our new measurement is 1.5. Anything that was two centimeters times 1.5 is going to be three. Anything that was three centimeters times 1.5 is going to be 4.5. And then we can grab a ruler and draw this out and put our new measurements on there. And don't forget the little boxes in the corner that shows that these are all right angles or 90 degrees. So this diagram, I know it's not the scale. This diagram on the right here is 1.5 times as large as the original. That works for enlargements. Well, it also works for reductions. So here's our reduction here. The scale factor is a quarter or 0 0.25. It's four times as small if you want to say. So all the measurements here, we still multiply by the scale factor. So the six centimeters gets multiplied by 0 0.25. We get 1.5. The four centimeters gets multiplied by 0 0.12, uh, sorry, 0 0.25. So it becomes 1.0 centimeters. The two gets multiplied by 0 0.25 and it becomes 0 0.5. And then we draw it out again with the new measurements. You can see it's four times as small. Again, this is not the scale. I'm just showing you how scale factor works. Okay. So go to the fourth page there. So what we can talk about is similar polygons and properties. Now, when one polygon is an enlargement or a reduction, so it has a scale factor of another polygon, we say that the polygons are similar. So now if you look at these, I mean, they could be the same. We don't know. Here's the original. Here's the new one. Well, it's larger, so it's probably a enlargement. But they have to be similar, which means they have a scale factor that's the same. So let's look at angles first. So if you look here, angle 96 angle 96. So 96 degrees, 96, that works. 154, 154. Uh, 110, 110. 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So we know all the angles are the same. Now, let's see about the corresponding sides. Well, oh, here, here's the first one. So angle P equals angle P prime. And you can see, see how it's angle P right there, and then angle P prime. It's just the, the little mark up there is a prime and then we just use it for telling us that there's a similarity. Okay, it's the rules. Now, all side lengths need to be proportional and all angles need to be the same. So are they proportional? Well, 
we could figure that out if we need to. And you want a quick way of doing it. It's really, it's not that bad. Take, take a number, three divided by two, you get 1.5, okay? Take another number and see if they're all the same. So take like 3.75 and divide it by 2.5. So if we grab a calculator, let's see. Oops, 3.75 divided by 2.5 equals 1.5. Oh, cool. Let's try this 4.5 and divide it by 3. Let's try that one. 4.5 divided by 3. Remember, because it's the second divided by the first. Uh, yeah, 1.5. Oh, so that's cool. So it's 1.5. That tells us that this second polygon is 1.5 times as large. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, so what we can do then is if you flip to next page after that, what we can do is we can use that basic property and figure out questions. So here we got two triangles. So we got a big one going down to a small one. So it's a reduction. We can see that. And what it is is it goes from this, this side here goes from a four to a three, and this eight needs to go to something, and we need to be able to figure this out. Well, we can do that by just setting up a proportion. It's really quite easy. So second divided by first. So three divided by four. And you can see right here, three divided by four equals x divided by 8. Remember, it's the second one divided by the first. So 3 divided by 4 equals x divided by 8. Okay? So if you do re rearrange or cross multiply, right? So it's easy. 4 times x is 4x. Yeah? 3 times 8, right there is 3 times 8. So we end up with 4x equals 24. And we know we've already done the solving equation part. So we've got to get x by itself. So we divide both sides by 4. So we end up with x equals 6. Okay? So this one's a 4. And this is an 8. And because they're in proportion to each other, this is a 3. And this is going to be a 6. So it allows us, based on scale factor, to figure out sides of questions. OK, so look at the last page of this lesson here. So what we got is certain time of day, we have uh, a totem pole here. And we have the sun shining. We have shadows. And then we have a person down right here. And the sun's rays shadowing here. And now the cool thing is, is they're at equal angles. So for instance, this little angle C and angle Z are exactly the same, right? Um, we know that B to C is six meters and Y to Z is 1.3. We know the person's height is 1.8 meters. So that will allow us to figure out the height of the totem pole, which is really cool based on this, on proportions. So let's set up, uh, let's set up some ratios here. So and, and the cool thing is, is I, I've kind of changed this the way I, I did it as T over 6. You can do it however you want. So, for instance, you could do 1.8 over T equals 1.3 over 6. It will work. So it's kind of cool. Even if you screw up the proportions, as long as you get the patterning right, you will get the right answer. That's the neat thing. So this one, look, T over 6. So I went the height over the length of the shadow. So T over 6 equals the height of the person, 1.8 over the length of the shadow. So there it is there. Works. Well, to solve this, we cross multiply. Or you can use, I don't know if you've ever seen Fabulous Dr. C. You start at T, you go across, you go diagonal and across. So what you do is it's 1.8 times 6 divided by 1.3. And that pattern doesn't change. If your unknown's on the top here, it's these two multiplied together, the diagonal, and then divided by whatever's left over. So we end up with T point is 8.3. So we can figure out based on the height of the sun that that is 8.3 meters. Okay. Here's another one. Two octo octagonal garden plots are similar, right? So we know some things. Uh, they're similar. So 8.1 and 5.4 are related to each other. So then if we know 27, we can probably figure out Y. Or if we know 32.4, we can figure out X. So it allows us, based on that, to figure this out. So let's do this one. We're, we're going to solve for X first. So 5.4 divided by 8.1. So it's this divided by this is going to equal x divided by 32.4. So the pattern there, you can see that this one divided by this one equals this one divided by this one. So let's say you did that backwards and you did 8.1 divided by 5.4 would have to equal 32.4 divided by x. You just got to get the patterning right. So we have 5.4 divided by 8.1 equals x over 32.4, cross multiply. So the two that you're going to multiply together are the 5.4 and the 32.4, and then you're going to divide the whole thing by 8.4. You can see it's right there. So we end up with 21.6. So we know that H to G, that X value, is 21.6. Now let's do the same thing for NP. So way over here, we're going to solve for, we can just call the Y, it makes it easier to do. So use the original numbers. 5.4 divided by 8.1 is going to equal 27 over Y. Let's do that again. 5.4 divided by 8.1 is going to equal 27 
divided by y. And again, you could change the order around, you'd still get the right answer. So these two, these ones on the diagonal, you're going to multiply, and then you're going to divide by the 5.4. So 8.1 times 27 divided by 5.4 is 40.5. So with scale factor, you can use that to calculate anything as long as they're in proportion to each other. And when we say proportion, we're talking about they're similar, right? They're different sizes, but all the angles and sides are related to each other. Okay, so that was lesson 7.1 to 7.4. So there's just one more to do, 7.5 to 7.7, and that'll be a next lesson coming up right after this.